Our first guest is going to be talking about the Ansible operator, Sean Furley, who's a Red Hatter. So I'm going to let you just get started, Sean, and um, we'll roll on. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Sean Hurley. Um, I work at Red Hat with a team of guys working on uh, the Ansible operator, um, which will be eventually part of the operator SDK. Um, so really quickly, we just kind of want to talk about the, why we chose Ansible as a, for the operator. Um, one of the really powerful things about Ansible is uh, that we're using the new Kubernetes modules um, that will manage uh, Kubernetes resources. Um, it makes it really easy to template uh, Kubernetes resources just using Ansible. Um, so you can do all the Ansible things that you can do and also manage Kubernetes resources how you uh, have come to expect with other tools. Um, we also uh, are able to use Ansible Runner, which allows us to run a playbook or a standalone role. It means that we can reuse roles and just run them right from Ansible Runner, as well as um, a playbook. Uh, it also gives us structured output, which will help us uh, help an operator author manage their status of their um, resource. And then we also have some helpers that will allow us to um, kind of uh, hide the details of knowing about owner references and things and metadata of a Kubernetes resource. So I'll just quickly go through uh, the design of what we got started with. Um, so at the top here, we have a, a user going ahead and creating a custom resource um, where they will define their application state. Uh, and then the Ansible operator will be watching for that resource. The, op the Ansible operator is based on the operator SDK. And uh, so it has all of the, the go watch logic based on the operator SDK. And then it has a config file, which maps the group version kind of that resource to the Ansible playbook or role. Uh, the Ansible playbook or role is then run whenever an event happens on that custom resource. And uh, that pl playbook or role will actually create the application state in the cluster. Um, so that will create all your resources that you need and allows you to manage um, your application using Ansible. Um, and like I said previously, we're using the, uh, the new modules. Um, uh, so those really help out. So we're going to quickly talk about that uh, configuration file that I just talked about, where it maps the group version kind to a playbook or a role. Um, this is really the heart of how this works, is you now define um, your CRD's group version kind, and you tell it which playbook you want it to do. You package that up into the container, and then the Ansible operator now knows what to do when the events come in for that resource. Um, so next thing we can talk about is uh, how are we going to hand parameters to Ansible based on the spec that the user defines for their resource. And so what we've determined is that the spec key values can map uh, well to Ansible's extra bars. And these will allow us to say the, a user defines their spec and then we tell the Ansible what that what those user defined parameters are. Um, the Ansible operator also uh, will take a first stab at managing the status for the uh, operator author. Um, as the operators are supposed to own statuses, uh, we thought it was important that uh, we do this. And because of Ansible Runner, we're able to get structured output about what is happening in the Ansible run and uh, surface that to the user who only wants to look at their CR um, that they created. So that's what we're doing here. Um, so as you can see, like green is the user defined stuff and then the blue stuff is um, what the operator is managing. Um, so we'll go back to the uh, design overview with a little bit more added. Um, and you can see here that I've added that the Ansible operator is actually writing back to the custom resource, the status um, based on what you know, we've determined from Ansible Runner. Uh, we can also see that um, the events are coming back from the app, uh, from Ansible playbook uh, or the role back into the Ansible operator so that we can uh, do this. Um, so you might be asking, how do you end up using the Ansible operator? Um, one of the ways that we uh, 
we envision using the Ansible operator is using a base image, and then you're only responsible for creating that config file, creating a custom resource definition, and then writing the Ansible code that you need to do the logic and work that you want it to do. Um, so the basic idea is that uh, the Ansible operator is already packaged up and into a base image. You um, just use that base image when you're building your own uh, operator and you copy in these files and then uh, the Ansible operator knows where to look for the config file and we'll be able to run. Um, and all you have to do is write the Ansible code. Um, so moving on, we can go to the demo um, that I have hopefully working. Um, and so we, right now I just have a mini cube cluster up and running um, uh, with the my CRD already installed. Um, and so I have here this um, folder, which is effectively going to be my, what I'm calling a busy box Ansible operator. Uh, this busy box role has a single task and its job is to um, create a busy box pod and then just run this um, while true echo out a message uh, to the council. So, Don, can, all this can, is, I, can I get you to make your font a little bit bigger? Um, uh, yeah. Those of us with eyeballs, mm. older eyeballs. Nope, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Sorry about that. Um, People are squinting. Man, shift plus or equals. Yeah, that's that's much more readable. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Um. So, uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh. So this is the task. Um, what it will do is, uh, like I said, it will just print out a message that we define from the CR, um, but it also has a default, so because Ansible already has default. So um, the other thing that we probably care about is the config file that we're using. So right here, uh, you can see that all it is is a mapping of the group version in kind and to, and to the uh, Ansible playbook path. Um, that we have here, and we can see the playbook is just a task that will import a role. Um, so let's, uh, and we can also look at this Docker file here, because that's the other thing that matters. Um, we can see that we're using our base image. We're going to copy in the BusyBox role. We're going to copy in the playbook, and we'll also copy in the Ansible config. Uh, the config file for the Ansible operator. So we're going to go ahead and just deploy this operator. Um, I already have, a, okay, sorry about that. So we can see that it's uh, spinning up right now and we can go ahead and get the logs of this guy. All right, so that's running. Um, what we'll do now is actually create one of those CRs uh, for our CRD. You can see that we actually got our first event. What oh, is taking so long? There we go. So now Ansible's running. Uh, you can actually see the Ansible output uh, right now. And uh, we have our BusyBox pod running. So we can go ahead and see what that guy is doing. As you can see, it's just printing out hello world. Uh, let's say we wanted to change that message. What we could do is just edit my CR. So we just edited it and we should see the Ansible operator kicking off any minute now. There it goes. And so we'll look at that new one. 
and you can see it's uh, it's saying new hello world. And so if you uh, remember, we just took this role and we're starting to use it. Um, and that role really didn't have anything to do with, um, let's say, owner references. So uh, okay. as an Ansible operator, uh, author who's just writing Ansible, you might not know that you need to set an <clears throat> owner reference to be able to do garbage collection. And the Ansible operator actually has a mechanism to help you with that. So we can actually um, put that, um, that owner reference in for you um, based on the resources that you create when you run Ansible. So what we can do is actually just go ahead and delete that uh, CR. And we should see that um, it actually ends up deleting all of the resources that were created uh, for that CR. Um, so that's the demo. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about um, the hybrid use case that we're calling it. Uh, what we're thinking is that because the Ansible uh, operator code will be a part of the operator SDK, you can actually uh, use the operator SDK, uh, the Ansible operator code, the same way you would the operator SDK code. Uh, this means that you can actually compose uh, pieces uh, of Ansible that you might want to run from a, uh, a Go operator that you're writing um, to give you more flexibility so you can do things that you would like to do. Um, so that's uh, one other way that we're planning on allowing people to, to use this. Um, so if you want to learn more, uh, this is like a pre-alpha application. We're still very much in the early stages and it will be, a PR will be submitted in about one to two months to the operator SDK to, uh, to get this fully baked in. Right now it's um, in Waterhole Ansible Operator and there's a link right there for you guys to go to. Um, and most of our team is hanging out already in the Kubernetes Slack in the Kubernetes Operators channel if you have any questions. Or as uh, I think Rob already added to the chat uh, for this, you can um, email the group at Operator Framework uh, via Google Groups. Um, so I will open it up to questions and stop sharing. All right, does anyone have any questions for Sean and the team that's sitting there patiently looking for your feedback? Uh, while we're um, waiting for that, Evan, if you want to um, share your screen and get set up to, to do your talk, that would be great. I'm going to say one thing about um, the goal for this is really exciting, which is to match the technology skills that, um, you know, an operator author has. And so Golang, uh, you know, is uh, a great language, but, you know, can be a little bit impenetrable and folks might not have skills. Um, or, you know, if you're in a uh, more ops focused versus dev focused team, um, you shouldn't have to learn a programming language to make an operator. And so this is really going to bridge those gaps where you can start with Ansible. If you do want to start calling some custom, custom Go code, um, then you can kind of level up to that. Um, and then maybe, you know, you'll fully transition to Go or maybe not. Um, so that's really exciting. Uh, and so this joins our Helm operator kit uh, and that works much the same way where you just use this base image, you don't have to produce anything, you just add a few files in, you know, your chart um, and you're good to go. And so this will all operate much the same way, and which is really exciting um, to make this a wider audience uh, that can produce operators, um, which is really exciting. And then the other thing that Ansible brings to the table, which is really, really cool, is that there's this plethora of Ansible already written out there. And so you can connect um, you know, orchestrating external hardware load balancers, for example, or all, all the things that you can do in the Ansible ecosystem with an operator um, and into your Kubernetes cluster natively, which is super, super exciting. Uh, so thank you for sharing that demo, and I'm really excited to get this in the SDK in, you know, one to two months. Yeah, thanks, Rob. All right, then. If there's no other questions, or if there are questions, ask them in the chat.